My name is Eric Newman. I am uh, running for uh, Bossier Parish School Board District Number Nine, uh, which is comprised of Central Bossier, South Bossier, and a small area out in Halton. Well, gathering that support is important because you want to make sure that Bossier Parish is a place that people want to come to to live. And when you have residents that come in to live, whether they do or don't have children, you want to get those people in for the tax base. Income tax, sales tax, property taxes, different things like that. Those all benefit the area as a whole, regardless of whether you have children or not. If the residents are there and the tax base is there, that benefits Bossier Parish, Bossier City, and it helps pay for streets and drainage. It helps pay for improvements along the way, not just within the school because uh, certain millages are set aside specifically for the schools and then the rest of it goes to the city and parish and when you have the more people you have and the more people that want to live in your area the better things tend to be. Uh, I think being fiscally responsible uh, making sure you make good sound business decisions with the funds that you're using, uh, making sure that you are fair across the board in the division of those funds. Uh, and of course transparency is key in all of this. If you don't have anything to hide there should be nothing hidden. Uh, and let everybody know what's going on. Be an open book and if people ask questions answer them honestly and to the best of your ability. Uh, as far as the challenges, I'll start with those. Um, in my district, there's uh, a couple of older schools within my district, uh, specifically uh, Bossier High School, uh, Central Park Elementary. Uh, those schools are more of an inner city type uh, atmosphere. Uh, I know Central Park itself was built in the 1950s and since then has had very little done to it as far as renovations and upkeep. Uh, there's things that need to be done along the way to make sure that those facilities are upkept on a regular basis and not to the point where we have to do something. Preventive maintenance is always the best approach for that. Uh, and then you go on out into South Bossier, you have um, you know, Parkway High School is brand new. It's a wonderful facility. Uh, Elm Grove Middle School was the old Parkway High School. Uh, you have Sun City that has uh, several, several T buildings, uh, temporary buildings there. Uh, a lot of the teachers and parents and students, they takes a lot of getting used to, and I don't know if they ever get used to that. So uh, addressing that is always, you know, you have the growth in South Bossier, so uh, when you're busting at the seams, as Bossier Parish is, with record number of enrollments, somewhere north of 22,000 kids, um, it, it's hard to address those. Uh, and But you have to be forward thinking, and you have to plan ahead and have a good forecast. Uh, and it's just, you know, it's great to see Bossier Parish growing the way it is. Uh, and with that type of growth comes uh, some growing pains and you just have to be able to make good decisions as far as the growth goes and within our district we have areas that are declining in growth and we have areas that are growing exponentially larger and it's just you have to find a good balance but regardless of decline or growth uh, everybody still needs the same representation and everybody still needs to be treated the same. Uh, as far as information, uh, I'll go with uh, meetings that I've had with administrators, uh, teachers, uh, parents within certain areas. Uh, I alluded to earlier the, uh, the condition of the schools. Uh, some schools are uh, getting required renovations, uh, which means that they need to be done before it's catastrophic or the building has to be shut down. Uh, some schools are getting uh, recommended renovations. that. Uh, make them more appealing, uh, more curb appeal. Uh, information like that uh, needs to be taken in and evaluated across the board. You know, Bossier Parish is one of the best parishes in the state as far as it goes with education and public education. Uh, and I think we need to do our best to keep it there and make sure that across the board we make sure each school is treated the same. You know, an elementary school in Central Bossier is treated just as equally as elementary school located anywhere else in the parish. I 
I would say one thing uh, that they've done well over the last five years is uh, doing their best to keep up with the growth. Um, you know, record number of enrollment this year, it's only been getting bigger every, every year since then. Um, they've done a good job of uh, keeping things on track, I guess is the best thing, moving forward. There hasn't been any major setbacks. Uh, there hasn't been anything that was detrimental to the students and the teachers and the administrators and the employees. Um, as far as poorly, I think the, uh, from word on the street, I guess is the best way to put it, uh, the uh, implementation of Common Core. I know that's a touchy subject for many, many people, regardless if you are in the school system or if you participate within the school system as a student or parent. Um, and I don't want to say poorly because uh, that's something that came down from the states into the parishes. And, uh, you know, so that in itself is not directly related at the school board, um, but it's my understanding that the school board could have along the way possibly made some changes within that curriculum or uh, voted to accept or deny that curriculum. And I think that's, I don't want to say it's something that was done poorly because I think overall they've done a very fine job, uh, but I think if there was one thing that you really wanted to point out that could have had some additional attention, I guess is the best way to put it, that that aspect uh, of Common Core. Well, uh, as I stated earlier, my district compromises uh, three high schools, uh, three different middle schools, and uh, seven or eight different elementary schools. So uh, by the job description itself, there's going to be a lot of uh, involvement from the entire parish just because of the broad area of the district. Um, now, as far as specifically for my district, uh, I think the school conditions need to be assessed uh, as one of the top priorities that I would go after. Um, but in doing so, when you take care of a small part of the parish, the rest of the parish will also benefit from that. Uh, it's similar to when we talked earlier, just because someone doesn't have kids, why should we enlist their support uh, as far as taxes and millages? Because the better Bossier Parish looks on, as a whole, the better it is for everybody. I mean, if I can improve, you know, one, two, three, and four schools along the way, it just helps improve the overall uh, appeal of Bossier Parish schools. Teacher performance uh, I don't think should be directly related to standardized testing. Uh, and I feel that way because uh, the tendency is for teachers to teach to the test and not necessarily teach the material but teach to the test because um, if, if you or I or graded or evaluated on a specific topic, we're going to focus on those specific topics to make sure we get the best evaluation possible. Uh, to me, teacher evaluation should uh, be based on a starting point and a finish point in the progress that was made from start to finish. Um, a lot of sports teams are not evaluated on their first game, they're evaluated along the season and then when they get into the playoffs, how did they perform after they started at a certain point and where they finished. Um, I know one thing that the parish has gone to is the compass evaluations. Uh, those are, teachers are for and against those. Um, but me personally, I think that it's, uh, you know, it, it's hard to come up with a one solution that fits everybody perfectly um, because you will have teachers that teach honors classes that have the more uh, uh, dedicated students, and then you have teachers that teach the lesser students and should a teacher be punished or not given a good evaluation because they have a student that is struggling uh, learning the schoolwork versus the other teacher that's going to get a good evaluation because she has students that are driven, he or she has students that are driven to succeed and then you have two different dynamics of students which will reflect two different, two totally different teacher performances. So I think each class needs to have a starting point and a finish point and you judge the progress along the way. Uh, a lot of the challenges are what, you know, a lot of what we just talked about with the, uh, the different dynamic and demographic of the makeup of the classes. Uh, do you take 
honor students and put them in with entry level students and mix those classes and then you have some that are exceeding and some that are falling behind. Does that solution work? Not every time. Um, but I think the main challenge is the, uh, the makeup of the class and you really, uh, you'll know the majority of the makeup prior to school starting or prior to the semester starting but until the teacher gets in there and really starts evaluating those students and forming a baseline for those evaluations you really don't know and if teachers are able to form a baseline or if uh, an administrator is able to help that teacher or a group of teachers are able to form a baseline for that set of students and then again at the end of the year or end of the semester you know where are we at now uh, grades will reflect along the way how the performance of the students are doing but if you start a baseline and then a finish point, everybody has a goal in business and you measure yourself against that goal. And those goals are usually a forecast or prior performance. So if you want to take your students from knowing this material and being able to answer this set of questions and you know in six months you want to learn this material and be able to answer this set of questions and your progress along the way, whether the students made A's, B's, or C's, or D's, or unfortunately F's, uh, that helps determine you know how well the teacher did along the way and you have notes I mean it's it's not an exact science that's that's one thing is that teacher performance and evaluation is not an exact science you've got to be able to look at it on a case-by-case -case basis a lot of people don't think that's a very efficient method but to me that's the most um, viable method Okay. What training do school leaders need to perform a fair teacher evaluation? Uh, one thing I think school leaders, uh, I think they need to be uh, connected to the classroom. Uh, I think school leaders need to be people that came from the classroom. Uh, so they understand the dynamics of being in the classroom and the difficulties that the classroom presents, the difficulties that the student makeup presents. Um, and as far as specific training, there's nothing that I know of right now uh, that I can quote as far as you know this version of training or that version of training. But um, I think ad administrators or evaluators of the teachers need to make sure that they spend a lot of time in the classroom so they know what to look for when they evaluate the teachers. Um, they're not just going in once a month for two hours and they get one little section of class. It could be Friday on a game day in the state playoffs in a high school team. It could be Monday after Halloween in an elementary school where the kids have been out trick-or-treating all weekend. And if you just take, I mean, you never know mm -hmm. when those events, but if you do that once a month for two hours, you don't get a true indication of what's really going on in that classroom. Uh, and I think just along with training and being connected to the classroom, have a, have a good methodical approach to it. Don't just, okay, it says we have to do it once a month, that's what we're going to do. Be in there. Spend some time with it. The more time you put into it, the better results you're going to get out of it. Um, Evaluations uh, for accountability versus improvement or with improvement, uh, it's a good way, uh, use a sports analogy, uh, you practice for a couple of weeks before you have a game uh, and you win or lose. Uh, that can be your evaluation. Uh, depending upon that evaluation gives you things to work on to improve upon before the next game. Uh, same as with teachers. Uh, give them a good solid evaluation and hold them accountable for those results yet at the same time letting them learn from them. Uh, I don't feel that teachers need to be uh, reprimanded based on one two hour you know observation during the month. Uh, see what that teacher is doing in the classroom. Spend that time with them. Uh, will it mean more people that need to be hired? Possibly. But uh, when it comes to my children, I spare no expense. Uh, and I would think that the people of Bossier Parish would feel the same way. If we need to increase, you know, head count as far as administrators or evaluators, that's great. We can train these people specifically to spend that time in the classroom and to look for it. Now, the balance between accountability and, you know, instruction, you have to tell somebody what they're doing wrong or they'll never know to improve upon it. 
as children, we did something wrong, our parents corrected us, and then we moved forward, either not doing what we did wrong or, you know, we made a change. And I think that's, uh, in business, you know, a company succeeds, they're doing something right. A company fails, they're doing something wrong. If they have a bad quarter, they have to make a change in order to improve upon the next quarter. And I think teaching is, and education is no different. Uh, you know, businesses uh, rise and fall, and uh, I think education can follow that similar mindset by giving good constructive feedback, holding people accountable for their actions, yet giving them the opportunity to produce results. I cannot say whether I would or not on that one. Uh, from my knowledge, the the charter style uh, teacher accountability that the, the charter schools are still up in the air from what I hear as far as whether they're successful or not because you only have a certain group of people that will choose to go and take advantage of the charter program um, so in order to get a good solid evaluation it all comes back to what is the makeup of the students within the classroom I think that that system is still very new very fresh and I don't think it's been tested over a period of time long enough to determine whether or not that's a good way to evaluate teachers. First and foremost, uh, does it benefit the students? Uh, I am a product of public schools. Uh, my sister and my mother and my entire family are a product of public schools. Uh, I have two children in there now. Uh, decisions need to be based uh, from the students' best interests first. Uh, and I think we need to have an approach that uh, the students are our most important thing because they are our children, they're our future, they will drive uh, this world and this economy and this parish and this city and these schools into the future. And if we start with the students' best interests in mind, uh, and then that filters into the teachers because they're the direct connection. Uh, if you think about it, there are teachers that spend more time with children than their own parents do uh, because you're in school seven or eight hours a day. These children go home to an after-school program or the parent that doesn't work gets off work till five or six, three or four hours, it's bedtime. So they're spending three hours a day interacting with their child and the teachers are spending seven or eight hours. So if you make decisions based on the children, and then the teachers because they're the direct connection to those teachers and then administrators and then the school board you know uh, kind of have a reverse role it's not a top-down effect it's a bottom-up you want to start with the people that will be affected the most and that's the students and if you base your decisions on that and you do the students right the students will take care of the teachers the teachers will take care of the administrators and so forth and so on it's just like uh, in any business if you take care of your main resource which is your employees your employees will take care of the service the service itself will take care of the profit the profit will take care of everybody else and if you have that approach to me that is the most successful that is the most beneficial approach when it comes to the school board system is making the decisions based on the best benefit of the students Well, I think uh, building consensus around the school board is, uh, and the support from the community is when you make, when you're representing your community and you're making uh, good recommendations and good votes, yay or nay votes, uh, within the school board and its, and its actions, uh, and you show that those votes and your decisions and the things that you bring to the table are to the best of your community and the students in that community, the, the support will be there. Uh, it's, it's not a, hey, can I have your support? It is, this is what we're doing, this is why I think we're gonna, we need to do it, this is how it benefits our community. Uh, and when you lay all that out and you're very transparent with your actions and your intentions, uh, the support will be there. Now, as far as bringing to the table uh, individual people, uh, Jane Smith was my high school principal, uh, know her very well. Uh, she sits on the state Bessie board. Uh, uh, very long-time friends with Henry Burns, who was a school board member for many, many years. Uh, talked with him at length, even during this uh, this election cycle. Uh, and 
those other members of the board that I already know as well. I have uh, family that has been teachers in the state of Texas, uh, still here in the state of Louisiana. Uh, just a, a plethora of resources that I can draw from, uh, family members spread out throughout the state, uh, family members in other states that have children that are same age as mine that say, hey, this is what's going on in our district, this is what we're doing in our state, and taking all that and bringing that and those resources to the school board and saying, hey, here's what's working, here's what's not working outside of our area. Uh, and I think just uh, in general, uh, just uh, life experiences along the way, the different travels I've had with my work, uh, afford me the opportunity to see different things, uh, to see uh, how independent school districts work in Texas, where the individual community tax revenues go directly to those schools versus uh, here in the parish where it's spread amongst all the schools. Uh, it's, it's, it's a different approach and uh, pros and cons for both. Uh, I will address Barstow Air Force Base first and foremost. Uh, being considered transitional, yes, we get a lot of great military families that come through here. Uh, several good friends that are military families that are still here that have moved on and that we know that are coming back. Uh, to move on to national standards as far as Common Core, uh, there are a lot of uh, underlying issues with, with Common Core. Uh, not only uh, at the core itself, to use a play on words, but uh, it is the federal government mandating curriculum for our children and standards for our children. I don't think the voting public likes that because they have no say in whether or not they accept it. Um, are national standards good in certain areas? Yes. Uh, in most areas, that's up to the individual citizen to make that decision and that's why we have elections so we can vote someone in that we think is going to do a good job or not whether they be in the federal government, state government, or local government. Uh, Common Court is a very touchy subject. Um, a lot of parents and students uh, don't care for it. Uh, a lot of teachers feel unprepared for it. Uh, administrators feel as if it has been forced upon them. Uh, the our governor, for instance, is uh, suing the federal government to get to repeal Common Core out of Louisiana. Uh, and just from my research and reading up on it, and trying to keep in touch with it all, um, the Common Core is the Common Core for state standards, I believe, is is what the official title is. Um, and from what I know and what I researched, it was a way, they labeled it state standards, so it was a way for the federal government to hand down these standards to the local states because the states were always under their own power to put into school curriculum and education standards. Um, I don't think the students in New York will test the same as students in Louisiana and California. It's their different regions, there's different learning styles. I think the uh, the education should be left up to the local municipalities uh, and in the states and I think they should be allowed to have more than one choice and that's the thing with Common Core, there's no other choice. It was handed down and this is what you have to deal with and I think that's what most people don't like uh, is the fact that it's, there's no choice in their education of their children. This is what they had to go with and, uh, and that's where a lot of people uh, have disagreement with. Of course there's always something to share but uh, we're just looking to keep Bossier Parish as one of the premier parishes in the state. As far as it's a great parish, it's produced some great people, uh, it's produced educators, business owners, um, and it will continue to do so. Uh, Bossier Parish um, uh, doesn't have, uh, has maybe one private school in it, uh, and it doesn't even go K through 12. Uh, and I think that is a reflection of how well the parish has run its school board system, uh, and how well the schools perform, and how well people uh, accept or, 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 or like the schools. Uh, and I, 
just think that we need to continue moving forward uh, and making good sound decisions, um, being open with the constituents within our districts and making sure that there's 12 districts and if all 12 districts work together it's going to be better for the whole and uh, yes each individual district has its own characteristics and they need their own individual attention um, but if you work together as a whole and uh, you get along with everybody uh, I think everybody benefits in the end.